The following screencast will provide you with a demonstration of the new focus area feature in Acknowledge. Focus areas are a great way to expedite your data analysis. They allow you to identify regions of interest within a file both during data collection and during review and analysis. In this example screen capture down below we have three regions of the file that are highlighted in red. Each of these red regions represents a particular focus area. The software will automatically shade the region for you when you enter the focus area. And as we get into the demonstration, you'll see that each focus area is individually labeled so you know precisely which region is which. Now the main advantage to using the focus areas is that it allows you to extract the measurement results from just the regions that you're interested in. And most of Acknowledge's automated analysis routines and also the Find Cycle Peak Detector have been updated so that they will work just over the focus area. In other words, if we were to analyze this particular file here and export the data to the journal file, we would end up with three areas in the journal, um, one for each of the regions with the appropriate results. If you choose to export your data to a spreadsheet, you would end up with three individual spreadsheet files, one for each of the three regions. I'm now going to provide a series of demonstrations that will show how to use the focus areas with different types of acknowledge automated routines and the find cycle peak detector. The following segment will show how the automated blood pressure analysis will work with the focus areas. We have um, pulse rate or heart rate, systolic, diastolic, mean blood pressure and the raw arterial waveform in the top channel. The focus areas work very similar to any of the measurement tools where you highlight a region of interest. We have a new toolbar here. It's the focus area toolbar. You select the plus key and you're asked to enter a label. I'm just going to call this one baseline. Now the software has shaded the area and we've placed a label so we know precisely which region we're interested in. Interested in. I'm going to highlight another area over here and add another area of interest. And then a final one over here. Call this one recovery. It's also possible to enter these focus areas when you're recording data and to do that you go into the manual event hotkeys and there's an option now to create a focus area and basically you, you select the function key that you want to use you type in your label down here and then while you're recording your data you can hit that function key and it will create the focus area for you. I don't have an ECG channel and I'm going to select focus areas only. And okay. So I'm asked to select one. So now the software is going to run through and perform the blood pressure analysis. And once it's completed the analysis, the software will then provide a spreadsheet for each of the 
focus areas. At the moment where well, the software is just going through and labeling all the waveforms. So now we have three spreadsheets. First one is labeled baseline and you can see the results just for that phase of the recording. Second one is the test phase and again you see just the results for that period. And then finally our third spreadsheet relates to the recovery period. Close this down. The following segment will show how to use the focus areas with Acknowledge's automated electrodermal activity analysis routine. In the following example we've got an electrodermal activity file that has already been scored by Acknowledge and you can see I've selected two areas of interest, two focus areas. The first one I've got labeled as baseline and my second one is the test area so it's a very short or well, relatively short file. The blue water droplets represent non-specific skin conductance responses and the red with the yellow flags on top represent specific skin conductance responses and down below we've got two channels of digital events and these have been converted into event labels for use with this type of event related analysis. This particular event related electrodermal, electrodermal analysis routine will work exactly the same as the hemodynamic one in the sense that it will give us an option to perform the analysis just on the focus area. And I've got the, area, the focus area option selected down the bottom. I've got my electrodermal on channel 1. I've already got a phasic channel, although I've, I've actually got it hidden. And my stimulus events are stimulus delivery type and they're marked in the global event region. I'm going to hit OK because the software has already scored the events for me it's very quickly gone through and taken any measurements and this time rather than pasting the data into a spreadsheet I'm actually using the journal to store the information so in the journal we can see that this is event related EDA analysis of channel 1 GSR 100C data and the focus area is the baseline. Now, as we can already see in the data there is only one specific skin conductance response within that period and it was associated with a type 1 stimulus. These were the different stimulus or stimuli that were delivered and the times that they were delivered and this is the skin conductance frequency analysis so this is every 10 seconds we're reporting specific and non-specific responses and down below we see the second focus area this is the one that we labeled test and as we counted before there were four particular specific skin conductance responses. There's all the results for those. These are the stimuli types, type 1, 2, and 2, and 1. And the frequency analysis and the matching summary. So it gives you a, an idea of how the focus areas can work for different types of data and different types of analysis routines. The following segment will show how to use the focus areas with Acknowledge's automated ensemble averaging routine. In this particular example we're looking at an impedance cardiography signal. In this case it's the first derivative of the raw impedance, DZDT. And it's quite common for 
uses to average or ensemble average the derivative signal DZDT and the focus areas allow you to automate this very quickly and really simplify the analysis. So again here we have two focus areas that I've already selected. One I've got labeled as baseline, another one I've got labeled as test. If we go to the analysis menu and select ensemble average I'm going to use the peak of the signal to locate each of the DZDT signals. I'm using the peak of the channel 9, which is DZDT, and I'm just going to analyze the focus areas only. Software wants me to highlight one of the peaks, so I'm just going to highlight an area highlight one of the peaks, it's the peak pointing up or down, it's up. Now it's asking me which channels I want to average. For this demonstration I'm just going to average the channel we're looking at which is channel 9. Now it's asking me to highlight the area so that it can select the time boundary. I'm just going to roughly highlight an area like so. and auto scale everything, select do average now the software is running through and constructing the average for the two selected areas we go to the first one baseline and the second one test and there you have line these up your two averages and we can do something like this whereby I'm going to relabel this one baseline and copy this one and I'm going to insert it, label this one test. So now if we close this one down, we can open this one up a little bit more. These are the two averaged waveforms from the baseline and test periods. We can make sure that they're scaled identically. and we can overlap the two and you can see very very slight differences between the baseline and the test period here. Anyway that gives you another example of how the focus areas can significantly improve and automate the analysis procedure. The following segment will show how to use the focus areas with Acknology's Find Cycle Peak Detector tool. Another way in which the focus areas can be useful is to speed up the measurement process. And this is again looking at the original blood pressure file that we were looking at before, where we've got systolic, diastolic, mean, and heart rate. And I've set up a bunch of measurement channels here the maximum of the systolic, minimum systolic, mean systolic, and the peak to peak. Uh, the difference between the minimum and the maximum systolic within the selected area and then the same for the diastolic channel. Now normally the way the measurements work you come along you highlight an area and these measurement results are updated. The beauty of the focus area is we can select a focus area and we've essentially placed the cursors within that area so these measurements now apply to the entire focus area and if I advance this to the test period the measurements are now updated for the test phase and then finally the same applies for the recovery phase so very quickly we've been able to take a lot of measurements from three particular areas of the data and those measurements can be pasted down into the journal file or into Excel or some spreadsheet. 
In this final example, I'm going to show how to use the Find Cycle Detector to work within the focus areas. And again, we're looking at a blood pressure. It's the same blood pressure file we started with, only this time I've got the file set up with four pull-down measurements. And these measurements are looking, if I highlight an area, they're looking at the pulse rate channel, heart rate, and we've got the maximum heart rate, the minimum heart rate, the mean heart rate, and then we're reporting the time period. So in this selected area over here, we're looking at 4.3 seconds worth of data, and we're reporting a maximum heart rate of 105 beats per minute within the period, the minimum of 92, and then the mean of a mean of 97. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is use the find cycle detector. So I'm going to open that up. I've actually already set this up so that we're going to look at a fixed time interval of three seconds. And I'm going to look at the data over the um, three second interval, the entire period of the interval. And I'm going to output my results into the journal file and then I'm going to find all in the focus area. Before I do that I'm going to open my journal and I've got the journal over here on the right side so we've just sort of compressed everything down a little bit. This will um, give us a better view when we export the data. So here we should be set to go, find all in focus areas, and there we have it. Each one is broken out by the heading of the focus area, so we've got measurements for baseline, the maximums, the minimums, the means, and we can see there's our delta time period of three seconds for each of the intervals. Eleven cycles were found in the baseline period. Then we jump to test period number one, and there were 12 cycles. Then over to the recovery period, where nine cycles were analyzed. And then finally, test period two, which is the fourth focus area in the recording. Uh, there were eight cycles found. Close that journal down. So again, the find anything you can do in the find cycle peak detector can be done over the selected area, the in, entire recording, or within any number of focus areas. Now we've been working with relatively small files but if you've got many hours of data and you've got quite a few focus areas that you're working on this is an extremely rapid way of getting the measurements and data that you're interested in and getting them down into a spreadsheet or into the journal file for further analysis so this option to add focus areas is a really powerful addition to acknowledge and it really takes full advantage of all the automated analysis routines that are appropriate for this type of tool and also it adds yet more power to the fine cycle peak detector anyway this concludes our demonstration of the acknowledge focus areas feature